Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... Emma Peel had been given the job of looking after Lord Dessington. She arrived at the offices of the Capital Land and Development Company and got straight to the point. Steve tells me I have to stay with you all the time, Lord Dessington. Never let you out of my sight. Really, dear lady? You think it's necessary? Yes. Yes, I agree with Steed. Someone made an attempt upon your life and you escaped. It was a very narrow escape. They will try again. Oh, come now, not necessarily. Of course, I appreciate the service, Mrs. Peel. Apart from the assignment, Lord Dessington, Steed and I thought... Shh. Carry on. Act normal. Leave this to me. There's someone outside the door and I'll attend to it right now. <laughs> The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many women say, once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Because there's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water OMO. It solves Mrs. Sutherland's washing problems for her. Very dirty oil or grease marks. Yes. If you use cold water OMO, there's no trouble at all. It comes out very, very easily indeed. There's no washing problem too difficult for cold water OMO. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Walls Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, half and half. That's on inside. Quite milky chocolate the way you like. All over the outside. We're walls Pink Pussycat now. Uh -huh. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed takes a step forwards, Emma Peel one backwards, and Maxie Martin and Jolly Jenkins again crack. Stop me if you've heard this. With three murders, one attempted murder and one undiscovered murder they knew nothing about, John Steed and Emma Peel were not doing very well on this case. They knew that the whole board of the Capital Land and Development Company was threatened with destruction. They knew that a vaudeville artist known on the boards as Mary Maxie Martin and his partner Jolly Jenkins were possibly responsible for the crimes. But how and why was still a mystery. Steed and Mrs. Peel felt that their job was to protect the remaining members who could be in danger. Lord Dessington was an obvious target, one attempt having already been made on his life. Shh! Wait. Oh! Miss Charles, isn't it? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Quite thrown off my balance. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lord Dessington. I didn't mean to disturb you. Eh? Uh, no, no, no. Come in, Miss Charles. Come in. Miss Charles is in. I came to remind you, sir, that you are due at Farrington Hall today. You asked me to jog your memory. Oh, uh, yes, yes, so I did. Uh, so I did. Uh, do you fancy a trip into the country? Oh, yes. Yes, I think that sounds very attractive. You are going with Mrs. Peel? Well, why not? I, I'm sorry, sir. I apologize. After all, it has nothing to do with me. You're right there. I have apologized. What is it, Miss Charles? Don't you approve of my charming bodyguard? Mrs. Peel has agreed to look after me. Do you think it's a good idea? It isn't for me to say, sir, is it? No, it isn't. But now you've shown your disapproval, you might just as well continue your opinion. Well, as you have asked, I hardly think that it is right for the company's image. Um, do you think that another murder might help the company's image, Miss Charles? I hardly think that the would-be killer will strike again so soon, particularly at Farrington Hall. However... Lord Dessington, I'm sure that the lady knows what she is doing. Yes, yes, I'm sure that she does. Shall we go then, Mrs. Peel? Before the sparks fly. While 
while Mrs. Peel concentrated on her task of looking after Lord Dessington, John Steed was following up on the mysterious phone call he'd had from Bradley Marler, the variety gag writer. He'd called at Marler's office before to ask for information regarding Maxie Martin. Marler had promised to help trace him if it was at all possible. But the phone call had been desperate and garbled. Steed had got round there straight away to find... Stabbed. That's what he meant about the knife. Stabbed or... Or is this a throwing knife? Hmm... Yes, yes, it is. A knife thrown into his chest. Knife-throwing act? Again, we have this theatricality. I must have dragged himself to the phone, dialed my number, blurted out the message, and then... Then this... Hmm. But he did say he'd written down the address where Maxie Martin is staying, but... Where in all this? Steed looked around at the hopeless confusion of Marla's office. The whole place was knee-deep in papers, all scribbled on. Uh, my wife is so changeable. A month ago I adored her. Today I can't stand the sight of her. <clears throat> A candle maker is one who works only on weekends. Oh, no. No wonder Maxie Martin gave it up if this is all he had to go on. Oh, well, somewhere amongst this lot is the clue I'm after. It's only a question of time. And Mr. Punch addressed his audience once again with... It's only a question of time. They're all going. Bradley Marler had taken his last curtain call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Oh, well, we did our best, Mr. Punch. And you know what our best is like? We knock them out. We paralyze them. We slay them. Oh, oh Lord. Why? We, we thought, thought we would have cried. We slayed them in the old ten row. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. But now, now to business. You must both leave at once. It is essential that you both rectify your previous mistake. You know what I mean. Lord Dessington? Lord Dessington? Lord Dessington. He must be killed. He must be killed. He must Kill. be killed. Kill. 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 He must be killed. Lord Dessington drove Mrs. Peel down into the country. He was in a particularly thoughtful mood. A penny for them, Mrs. Peel. Hmm? Oh, just going over things. Steve and I haven't done too well on this case, Lord Dessington. Well, it's hardly your fault. The whole affair is quite bewildering. I mean, what the devil have we got to do with music halls and all that sort of rubbish? Well, it's clear enough that your company has taken over lots of the old variety theatres and is in the process of pulling them down. Even so, that's just a business transaction. Vaudeville is dead. There's no place for it. We can't blame us. But somebody does. Yes, but, but why? I'm not sure. There's more to it than that. The variety act is just the cover-up. There's someone who's behind it all. It must be someone who knows about Project Cupid. Eh? You think so? Mm, I'm sure of it. Well, I don't see it myself. Well, neither do I. That's the reason I'm trying to think it all out. How long has Miss Charles worked for you, Lord Dessington? Uh, oh, uh, about two years. Hmm. Yes, I see. And all the information on Project Cupid is filed away in the offices of the Capital Land and Development Company? Of course. Oh, I'll tell you quite frankly, Mrs. Peel, that I'm darn glad to get out of the place for a bit. I don't know why, but I feel safer in the country. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that, Lord Dessington. Uh, um, are we here already? Yes, yes, this is Farrington Hall. Or at least where it will be. But it isn't even built. <laughs> no, not yet. But it's all planned. Like your opinion on it. As you see, it's all marked out with white tape. Every room. Uh, do you understand Builder's plan? Well, I haven't exactly majored in the subject, but I think <laughs> I can catch on. The house will face this way. Yes, that's right. Uh, the windows will be here, facing the hill. Remarkable view. Mrs. Peel, you are standing in the fireplace. Oh, so sorry. I think the place has possibilities, Lord Dessington, but I'm... Mrs. Peel stopped and looked keenly at a cluster of bushes. What is it, Mrs. Peel? I 
thought I saw something move down there in what will be your gardens. The bushes, they move. Burnham Wood comes to Dunton, eh? Mm, well, something <laughs> like that. Although it's unlucky to quote from Macbeth, you know. We've had plenty of attention from the variety stages. Heaven help us if the classics catch up with us. That was hardly likely. For down in the bushes, the two comedians were ready to start their act yet once again. Ready, jolly old boy? Ready, Maxie. We've got to be good this time. Yeah, sure. Now, just keep up the pace and don't gag through the laughs. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get any? Sure. He you laughs last and all that. Are you all set? One, two, a one, two, three. You've got, got to S-M-I-L-E. Uh, to be H-A-double-P-Y. Back in the marked-out foundations of Farrington Hall, Mrs. Peel and Lord Dessington were amazed to hear the sounds of a comedy song emanating from the bottom of the grounds. Lord Dessington was inclined to be amused. Mrs. Peel wasn't. She drew a revolver from her handbag, gave an order to Lord Dessington... Stay here. ...and made off at the direction of the sound. Here she comes. Now you take her on, Jolly. I'll do the dirty deed. Sure. Come here, me proud beauties. <laughs> Jolly legged it into the bushes. Mrs. Peel followed. But Mary Maxim Martin remained hidden. Then, when all the confusion appeared to have passed, he calmly walked up the slight slope and said to Lord Dessington, Oh, I'm very, very sad that you have to leave us, but when you got to go, you got to go. What the devil? Keep your hands off. Oh. Ah. Ah. Too bad. Ah. A bit of a tight squeeze, as the actress said to the bishop. Maxie had his hands round Lord Dessington's throat. A short while later, Lord Dessington died. <laughs> Mrs. Peel tore after Jolly Jenkins, but she didn't catch him. In a strange way, he seemed to know the undergrowth better than she did. He just vanished. I missed him. How the devil did that happen? Not a disappearing act as well. Mrs. Peel returned to the marked-out patch of ground where Lord Dessington had planned to build Farrington Hall. He lay sprawled in the grass amongst the chalk marks. Oh, no. It was at that moment that Mrs. Peel heard the car taking off. She could have sworn that someone in the car was singing. That you had to leave us, but when you've got to go, you've got to go. Mrs. Peel made after the car. In Lord Dessington's Rolls Royce, she was able to make good time catching up easily on the worn out old jalopy driven by Maxie Martin. But he hadn't far to go. He turned into the entrance to Grease Paint Grange just ahead of her. It was at that precise moment that John Steed stopped wading through countless pages of script written by Bradley Marler. Ah, got it. Gresham Grange, commonly known as Grease Paint Grange. Of course, the old-timers rest home. That's where we'll find them. You'll find tragedy unless you move more quickly, Steed. Get going. <laughs> Gosh, Mary, you're lucky to have such a hard-working servant. <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't got a maid. Well, how on earth do you manage to keep your floors so clean and shiny? Ah, that's easy. I use Duo. Duo? Yes, Duo, the self-shining floor cleaner. It's so easy because Duo cleans and polishes in one go. How do you mean? Well, Duo lifts all the dirt out of the floor and dries to a bright, long-lasting shine all by itself. So when you use Duo, you don't have to worry about polishing. No, Duo cleans and polishes in one go. They say once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Here's Mrs. Senior from Boggan Tweeney. I've stuck to cold water, Irma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. There's no dirt or stains that can stand up to cold water Omo. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>